Hello tankers, it's Togrim. This is episode 25 of my Road to Unicum series. Today we take a second look at the AMX 1390. This is the tier 8 French light tank in a tier 10 Muravanka battle. There are six other light tanks with me and they will provide a lot of good footage of what to do and what not to do as a light tank. On this uh, map, because there are great areas where you can leverage your camo and play vision control games, where I like to go is on the north or east side of that middle lake. So from this spawn, I'm going to go to E7 and F7. And the reason why is it provides a very wide field of vision. So I can spot tanks heading towards hill, on hill, on the sniper's hill, on C5, as well as tanks down along their spawn line. There is also hard cover available here in case I need protection, soft cover, and clear escape routes. And none of those things apply for this 1390 here. He has hard cover on one side, but he's exposed to fire from the tank in front of him and the tanks behind him. And when he hit that building line, he didn't have his clip loaded, so he couldn't even defend himself against this you know, lower tier light tank that's punching him in the face, the M41. Also, there is no clear escape route. When you run up to the buildings, if you're going to try to get away from them, the only place you could possibly go is the ditch in the southwest corner of the map. So we left himself without an exit route and just got smashed. The T-54 lightweight has wedged himself in at the F5 position. I'm not a big fan of spotting from that place. You know, you can have games where you have a really good, you know, good spotting from that location. But the problem is, is it's easier to get counter spotted and he's totally wedged in now because I am sitting on this bush above him so if he tries to back out along the shoreline to head back toward their spawn he's gonna get fired on the entire way because I'm gonna keep him lit and you'll see in a moment he's gonna back up and make himself visible we just lost our M41 Bulldog who had been sniping from that position he was the guy shooting and spotting the 1390 originally but he stayed in the same place over and over again and that made it really easy for the opposing team to take him out. The T-54 lightweight knows when he backed out his sixth sense proc, so he knows that I can see him there. So he has to basically hide behind this rock. He doesn't have anywhere he can go. And, you know, that does a couple things. One, it limits his ability to spot tanks because he can't safely peek out because I'll light him. Two, he can't use his gun either. And I take a horrible, like, leading shot on that SB1C. I should have been aiming much in front of him, uh, but because I fired to get lit, so I'm going to go ahead and back down below the ridge, you know, stay in the ditch away from... You know, possible enemy fire. The only tanks that can hit me right now, based on where they've been spotted, are their arties. So, you know, none of their tanks in the western half of the map could hit me. If they had tanks on hill, I would be vulnerable. But we know that the top of hill is clear because our R1390 has gone up there and done a good job spotting it. My first shot hits the hull of this tank, so I instead aim at the M46 turret, which is angled sideways, and then just dump my last shot so that I can trigger the long clip reload. In a moment here, another one of our light tanks is going to die. We have a T-71 who belatedly tries to run away from the building line. He just died there. And there really was no value in the light tank hanging out there because we already had other friendly tanks to proxy spot their tanks. And then their SP-1C also died there. He came around a building into multiple enemy guns facing in his position, and he allowed himself to get spotted at the same time he spotted them. There really is no value in doing that. You know, the only time when it's okay, there are only two scenarios where it's okay for you as a light tank to get spotted at the same time that you spot an enemy tank. And one, that's when neither of you knew that the other was there and you just kind of run into each other. Like, that happens. And the other one is when you are flanking a tank so that even when you spot each other at the same time, their gun is pointed in the other direction and you're going to get, you know, open shots. And a lot of times you'll do this to flank and try to finish off a tank. This 110 is making like a tier one level light -like mistake. Like, he's crossing field and allows me just to you know unload on him and I don't even have to worry about getting spotted because I've got superior vision control moreover you know he he had to have known that I was there if he's paying attention to the minimap because I've been spotted twice so there's no reason you know, if he wanted to cross the field he should have done it by running along the road in the southwest corner of the map all right the score is six to five which on paper looks like it's reasonably close you know it's now six to six our 1390 uh, took a Sue scout run into their tanks, which was totally unneeded. You know, the best thing for a light tank to do, you want to try to keep, you know, one to two tanks lit at a time that your tanks can fire at, but you don't need to do, you know, a, a nubicide run like he did and, you know, get fired on by multiple tanks and get wrecked. I'm hanging out where I am because I want to make sure that we clear out at least this heavy tank. Okay, Gen Dragon, the 263, just 
finished off that heavy tank. So now it's just the JPE-100 in the southwest corner of the map, and he's both very slow and he's stuck facing a T-95. So this allows me to flex back over toward the northwest corner of the map, and I can just sit here and passively scout this E-100. The silver ammo penetration of 170 is going to be too low to reliably penetrate the turret, and you know I want to save up my remaining four shells for better shots, so I'm just going to sit here and passively spot. I do get credit for some of this damage instead of the PBCAC IS-4. I'm actually not sure exactly why that works sometimes. Maybe it has to do with radio range. Uh, and R-263 finishes off the E-100, so I can now move forward, and what I'm going to do as I approach them is I'm going to stay in the soft cover so that I'm not only leveraging my always on camo but that's getting stacked with these bushes that I'm hiding behind. I've got an E3 lit that is of course a tremendously dangerous tank and as it is he's moving away from us and then check this out that CDC drove right by me within two squares and didn't spot me but it's because I'm sitting in soft cover if I were out in the open he for sure would have seen me. The E3 I can tell he's moving away from me this is a great chance to try to finish him off my first shot Bounces off his side armor, but as he turns and faces his tank away, I finish him off. CDC is now dead, so we still know that where their JPE 100 is. Again, I'm not worried about him at all. He's not going anywhere, and he's too slow to cross uh, over to the field and help out. My main goal is to spot the 155, so we spot each other there. I stay in the ditch, and I'm going to wait until I drop from his view. And it takes between 5 to 10 seconds after getting spotted for you to no longer be lit. The main thing I want to do is move up carefully through soft cover to try to spot the 155, but I'm very cognizant that the E50 hasn't been spotted. So the second my Sixth Sense procs, I know it's the E50, I back away immediately, and his shot misses. So, you know, obviously I can't spot the 155 because the E50 may spot me. If the E50 spots me, he and the 155 will wreck me, so I have to hook around and try to spot the E50. That is their last remaining tank with good vision control, and I've only got two shots left in my clip. I haven't reloaded yet. I was hoping to spot the RD and maybe get a few shots on him. You know, but it's one of those things too with an auto loader. You have to kind of gauge whether or not you should just bite the bullet and, you know, trigger the 39 second reload for your clip. And I spot the E50. And the thing that sucks for him is, you know, if he's got six cents, he's no, he's, he knows he's lit. He's kind of wiggling back and forth a little bit. And our tank should have shots on him since he's in the open. Yeah, right, they're hitting him now. And I fired, but that causes me to get spotted. I don't want to get hit by Artie or the 155, so I'm going to sit down behind this hardcover and go ahead and start my clip reload since I only had one shell left. The great thing about playing a light tank that is an autoloader, or I should say an autoloader that is a light tank, is that you can still meaningfully contribute even while you're on reload because you can safely spot. What I want to do is light the E50 so we can pick him off, and then you know we can easily finish off uh, the two remaining tanks on the side of the map and notice the JPE 100 is dead you know I wasn't concerned about him he wasn't going anywhere anyway and then I make a little bit of a mistake here here I, I go to a bush which makes sense and then as I cut over to the second smaller bush I go out through the open and I get spotted so I should have lined up those bushes so that they were stacked together relative to where the E50 is and I was hanging out here this is really unwise what I'm doing I would not do this if this battle were like at all in question but I was sitting there after I got spotted and just waiting for my clip to finish reloading and then to fire two shots in the E50. But, you know, I could have exposed myself to fire from already potentially 155, even though there was some building cover between us. So, you know, that was a bit reckless on my part. That's definitely something you don't want to do if the, if the outcome of the battle is still in doubt. And the 155 has strong frontal armor, except for the antenna up top, but his hull is pointing down, so I can see the roof of his tank, and I'm able to penetrate his roof with two out of the four shots. Totally worth firing on, in my opinion. Now he's one-shotable by anything, and we finish him off. So there's just the arty left, and you know, even though my clip's reloading, again, as a light tank, I can spot and contribute in that way. And what I find interesting in this battle, you know, we had light tanks in this battle make really, really obvious mistakes, things that you don't want to do, but again, you know, Try to find an area which allows you a good field of vision to spot tanks that has hard cover and soft cover together, as well as a clear exit route. I pick up an Ace Tanker Mastery Badge, deal over 3,500 damage, which is second on our team, plus 5,700 spotting damage for 9.2k total damage contribution, which was multiples of the other six light tanks combined. So let me know what you'd like to see next. You know, I've got more footage on the 1390 in different situations as well as the ELCA MX, and I'm also working on the Lorraine 40T. Take care.